when you have followed my channel you will surely know that I was busy with the 2N3055 and using it as a power transistor in a power supply, a voltage and current supply. I got uh, quite a few interesting comments about what about the LM317? Can it also be used in that way? And when you study the data sheet, um, you will surely see this circuit. This is say the typical application. Uh, I made now a circuit where you, with which you can drive with that LM317 directly a 2 n 3055 And when we look further in the data sheet, um, there is a schematic, uh, and I will show it, where a NPN and a PMP transistor is used, but in my solution I avoided that and uh, was able to drive a 2N3055 directly out of this chip. I had, of course, to take all these warnings, etc., etc., uh, when I made my circuit, and uh, you can read them, uh, there are warnings about uh, the use of a diode, the use of um, input capacitor, output capacitor. One of the most important things is that when you use here an electrolytic or here an electrolytic, there must be a situation when the a regulator is switched off that no current can say flow back out of the cap here or out of the output capacitor back to the regulator that can damage it so anyway let's go again here take that all in account here Info about ripple rejection, etc., etc. The ripple rejection changes when the output voltage goes up. That's in a certain way logical. And now I want to go to that original schematic on the data sheet where they show how you can use. Sorry for all this. All these movements this is what I meant here is say the official schematic on the data sheet of the LM317 how you can drive a power and transistor with it and also you see here the diode protection diode here the voltage divider uh, with that potentiometer you can set the output voltage that's of course a very interesting anyway I solved these problems uh, in another way and let's go to my schematic so at first my schematic I have to say I never did something with the LM317 so I had to make a serious experimental setup that's the reason why you see here this big heatsink for the uh, 2 and 3055 smaller heatsink here for the regulated chip and this is my solution of course every solution has its positive things and its drawbacks the only drawback that I can find in my solution is that you need here a power diode and I've solved that problem by switching four identical power diodes together four times the 1N5408 and furthermore and these diodes prevent the charge out of the output cap can flow back to the regulator chip and also here I've used here also a diode for the same purpose 
to prevent that in whatever way uh, charge, current, can flow back to the regulated chip because it can damage that chip. Uh, is that necessary? Well, we can discuss a lot about it and then especially about these diodes here anyway. Because the transistor is also a diode that's driven, but say for safety purposes, etc. etc. I don't want to go too deep in the discussion. These uh, questions can only be solved by practical uh, experiments. Anyway, circuit again. In the data sheet you don't see here an electrolytic, you don't see here an electrolytic, but I've used them because uh, you, with this uh, beautiful setup, in fact a very simple setup, you can make a very good power supply for your workbench. And this power supply is also good for audio circuits because the ripple that it makes is tiny. It's 20 millivolts. That's the output ripple. I can show it here on the scope. The scope is now here on 0 0.2. Let's go to the maximum. Oh well, sorry, my this is the maximum ripple. My 10 millivolts, so 20 millivolts. I have to make it very short because my camera wants to stop anyway. So, um, this is a circuit. Good big heat sink. These are the values, output values. 6 volt, 1 ampere, 24 volt, 1.9 ampere. At the moment it's driven at 30 volts. Output current is 2 ampere. And we read here 24 volt output at 2 ampere. So that means that 50 watt, that the output of this power supply is 50 watts. And uh, say these, this is the load, two automotive car lamps in series. Each lamp can handle 12 volt at uh, say 20 watt or so, or 30 watt. I've switched two filaments in parallel. Anyway, so this is the load. Let's turn the pot meter. My camera still runs. Now I'm going to lower voltages. So you see that it works. With that 10k potentiometer now to the max. Now to the min. So this, this can be a very interesting good working uh, power supply for your workbench. And of course you need a transformer that can handle that watts output, current to a voltage. Maximum 33 volts, I will stay on the safe side. And you can see that on such a low voltage the ripple is even smaller. So I don't expect any problem. 9.9 volts out now. Let's go to 6 volts, 4 volts, 6 volt anyway, 6 volt must be approximately 1 ampere out. And well, so 35 volts in, 6 volts out at approximately 1 ampere anyway. And you can of course see that the lamps don't glow very now at 6 volts. Thanks for watching. Hope it was a little bit clear. I think it's a useful circuit for every uh, hobbyist, hobbyist, perhaps semi-professional, talking about audio, etc. Uh, I'm filming on, perhaps the camera will suddenly stop, 
again thanks for watching so no comments